Hi everyone, Robert Bryce here. I'm in downtown Austin at the Fairmont Hotel. It's the second day, uh, second and last day of the Texas Nuclear Summit. Uh, you can see the placard there. I just got off the stage, uh, presented this morning with my friend Ray Rothrock. Uh, we talked, uh, our caption for our talk was, yes, nuclear, now let's get sober. Uh, but yesterday I did some quick interviews with uh, five different uh, nuclear entrepreneurs that are here at the conference, and I just asked them two simple questions. Why is your reactor design going to prevail in the marketplace, and what are the biggest challenges that you face? And they were very brief interviews, only less than two minutes each, um, and so we compiled them into this quick reel uh, to give you a flavor of what the uh, nuclear uh, entrepreneurs, the nuclear promoters are saying about their technologies and the, and the challenges they face. So, here are those interviews. Uh, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Oh, you know where to find me. I'm on Substack, robertbryce.substack.com. See ya. What is it about your reactor design that you think is going to make it a winner in the marketplace? I, I, think, I think this pen is probably indicative. We're one of only two projects in the nation that have construction permits from the NRC. Right. So, we have cleared the licensing hurdle. We are building our first reactor as we speak. We have already built our reactor facility. It's the only reactor facility in the nation. So we've checked all those boxes. The technology was proven in the 1960s at Oak Ridge. Uh -huh. China deployed a molten salt reactor. Same technology we're using. So we know the technology works. Right. We have answered the questions. Can you license? Yes. Can you build? We are building. How fast can you build more? Okay. So I, and our levelized cost of electricity is going to be at or below natural gas. Really? So under mm. six cents, seven cents, you're saying then? Could be, yes. Un per kilowatt yeah. hour. That's right. Okay. Why is your design going to win in the market? Um, yeah, so we have a few kind of unique uh, aspects that um, give us a bit of a leg up on both regulatory and the fit for market. Um, so first of all, uh, we've been doing DOE authorization instead of NRC uh, really since the company was formed um, around two and a half years ago. And uh, we have a pretty uniquely qualified team to do this. So a uh, bunch of our core team members, including our co-founder and CTO, Yasser. Um, so Yasser was the chief architect on the Marvel program, uh, which was the first time the DOE had ever authorized a nuclear reactor for construction. So uh, by doing DOE authorization, uh, we've been kind of pretty streamlined on a regulatory front. You know, the DOE is still a, a gold standard regulator, um, but uh, it's, uh, it's just frankly more efficient for new advanced reactor technology to get through the regulatory regime. So that um, so that's one of your, your your key is that your key advantage then going through DOE then? That, so that, that has been an advantage from the beginning uh, because you know the, the executive orders that came out a few months ago said, hey guys, we really don't want to lose to China and Russia on AI and nuclear. And it said therefore uh, people should consider doing DOE authorization. And we said, wow, well, this is very serendipitous because uh, this has been our strategy uh, since the beginning. Yeah, so Deployable is a Houston, Texas-based microreactor company. We're developing a one megawatt microreactor. But it, what is going to make you successful? Sure, there's a couple of key metrics. One, uh, we're using the existing light water reactor supply chain. So the fuel, the moderator, the coolant, all available. Uh, two, um, our lead time to market and our ability to iterate. Will, will, in, will ensure that we can um, win this fight um, for, in this market. Why you're going to win is your supply chain availability and yes, speed to market. Yes, sir. Okay. Absolutely. The nuclear company is a delivery arm for nuclear infrastructure. We're looking at deploying nuclear at large scale using a design once, build many approach, meaning you're going to build it four to eight gigawatts at a time, ideally six, so that we can get those economies of scale and get that sequence of builds in place. Okay, got it. But when we were talking, you believe, at least in the near term, you want to use, if you're using ones that are not first of a kind, second of a kind, it's a limited market, right? It's the AP1000. So why is the AP1000, why do you believe that's going to be the way to go? Why that reactor? There's several large light water reactors out there right now, and I believe that there are several like the AP1000, the ABWR, the Korean APR1400. When you look at what banks are willing to stand behind, lenders for, in terms of underwriting, and what you can actually go to build today, it's large. Small is getting there very, very quickly, and we're here in Texas talking about which SMR is going to get there first in the state of Texas. Uh, so we're looking to build both large and small light water reactors. But you think that the large ones, the gigawatt scale, is going to be the, those will be the ones to deploy first? I believe that you're going to see an FID on a large nuclear reactor in the next couple of years, and I am hopeful that the SMRs will be right there along with it, if not shortly behind it. And FID is final investment decision. Yes, right. I, okay. we love yeah. our acronyms yes, here in this course. industry. So I'm Charles Oppenheimer with Oppenheimer Energy. And our 
premise is de-risking project and financial components of a nuclear deployment. And we've got several exciting projects we're, we're looking at uh, in the development phase. Gotcha. So you don't own reactor, not developing. We are, you're trying to get the reactors built. It's exactly it. When I, when I stepped into the startup space, I looked at the prospect of investing and starting a reactor company, and I said, absolutely not. Uh, gotcha. Would I be interested in finding reactors that are ready to be deployed and help with that, that part of gotcha. the problem? So what is the reactor that you're developing, What's, and why is that designed? going to succeed in the market. Sure. So we, we have a pretty simple underwriting guideline for our projects and is that it has to be a second of a kind project. So it doesn't have to be nth of a kind. I feel like that's a little mythical, but what you see in, in nuclear projects is the first of a kind. The first time you implement it is where this unbounded risk curve is. You don't know the, the, the operational capacity factor, the right. cost, the time frame. If you get to even the second project, and even if it's been a disaster, you've got enough financial and project information to optimize. And, and that's good, but so, I mean, then so you're talking, it? you're, it's the AP-1000. That's the only one in the U.S. that's fully licensed, been fully built, and only one that qualifies And these for were us. the ones that were built Vogel 3 and 4? That's right. Okay, that's so right. second question, then what are the, I, 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 I've been looking at the nuclear sector for a long time. What are the biggest challenges you face in getting this into commercial applications? Convincing industry, the offtake industry, the financial industry, that everything I just said was true. That everything I said is correct. Because, so you have, because to, you have to sell it now. You have to demonstrate it. I think our, our biggest challenge is um, we're, we're biting off uh, a lot here, right? And hopefully not more than we can chew. <laughs> because uh, we're not just building a test reactor, right? We're building a plant that will go critical and then reach full power operation and then power what we think will be the world's first uh, co-built nuclear plant and data center. Um, and moreover, so we're not just doing that plant, we're also setting up our factory at the same time. Right. And a lot of vendors... So then is it fair, I'm keeping it short, I told you I would. Sure, yeah. So the challenges you've got, you're trying to address so many things at once then, is that fair? Yeah, yeah, so it's, um, we're doing a lot at once, we have to raise a lot of capital, um, a lot of talented people in different domains. Um, but, but we think this is critical, right? And I just want to highlight this one thing. Um, a big part of what's gone wrong in the past in nuclear, in our view, is a lack of vertical integration. Uh -huh. um, so uh, in the past, uh, you know, most recent plant that was built in the U.S., uh, there was a parent company that outsourced everything to like dozens of suppliers. And when they brought all that stuff together at site, lo and behold, it didn't really snap together too well. And yeah. there were reworks and cost overruns and schedule overruns to the tune of like 10 years and $15 billion. Right, you're talking about Plant uh, Vogel. Uh, yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> okay, but, um, okay. but you know, so the, the idea here is, what if you vertically integrate and do like 70 or 80% of the plant in your factory, and you still outsource a few things like your turbines or your pumps or your heat exchangers. Yeah. But otherwise, as you saw in our factory tour, you've got raw stainless steel coming into the factory and you're manipulating that into your finished reactor product, right? Gotcha. So, so we see that as a massive differentiator. It's hard to do because it takes a lot more capital and a lot yeah. more effort, but we think that is the answer to what nuclear uh, has been missing. So what are the biggest challenges? What's going to be the what are the problems that you're going to face that you have to overcome? What are the biggest sure. ones you face? Sure. So uh, the regulatory environment's uh, designed for one gigawatt system. Right. Uh, we, we're building one megawatt systems in multiple yeah. deployments. And so there's uh, movements uh, in Congress, yeah, Part 57. Uh, with that to prove, that unlocks a regulatory pathway to market for us. But that, that, that's the key challenge. So regulation is your biggest yeah. challenge? Yes, sir. Yeah. There's several challenges on the table, but I think the largest one right now is making sure folks like yourself, the media, are asking the tough questions around what's why the MOU? Where's the binding commitments? Let's stop chasing these you know, non-definitive agreements and let's start putting our steel in the ground, like concrete in the ground. And I think that's what we need to start forcing the industry to, to do versus glorifying and chasing every single MOU out there. So, but boil that down again one more time. I just, I, yeah. I, you lost me a little bit. So what, what is that challenge? So it's the challenges in actually getting the challenge a, is holding a, people a, contra a, contraction, a contractual deal where they're actually building. Yes, I would say that the challenge is getting all the stakeholders that are necessary to build nuclear at a table and committed to a timeline to commit to a definitive agreement. Right so, now we're right. chasing MOUs with everybody we need to start saying who's going to be the owner, who's going to be the operator, constructor, the technology, 
And that team, where are they going to go build? Right. How fast are they going to go build? So I'm going to read it back. The biggest challenge is getting the damn things built. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> what are the biggest obstacles you face then in trying to get this done? Yeah. The AP1000, as you said, proven technology. But from your standpoint, from Oppenheimer sure. Energy, what is the challenge that you face, That you, what, the biggest challenge you have to overcome? Well, the, the challenge with large light water reactors is the capital outlay. They're such big projects and specifically it, the Vogel project put a black eye on large yeah. nuclear projects. So everybody in utilities and in the financial community says, let's look at the past track record. It's terrible. I don't want to do that. Now, what we have seen is it's completely shifted in the last two years when I started this AP1000 development path. And now everybody's talking about, well, that seems the most practical. Um, yes, it's high capital, but we there's a growing consensus that repeating a reactor of any type is the best next step, and so we seem to be really well positioned timing-wise. So just to reiterate, then the biggest challenge you face is is it the capital requirement for getting the project done. Yeah, the capital and cost risk, and as a startup, how can we de-risk that by taking that first step? If we're willing to go first and do the first capital, get it started, uh, does that help the process? And we're, we're seeing there is a demand for that, that early stage of a Good. project. Good, yeah. okay.